Hello and welcome to Jack Myers Ministries and Life Family Church Podcast. So be blessed by this week's message. So go with me in your weapons manual to Proverbs 4. I want to talk to you tonight about ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder, which is something you all have heard of. And um, you are participating in in one way or another. I just hope that you're on the right side of this coin. But you know what? If you're not, by the end of the service, you will be. Amen? So uh, which side of the coin are you on? In other words, do you have an attention deficit to the word or do you have an attention deficit to the world? And only you, you can answer that. Well, God can answer it for you if you're not sure. I always recommend that you ask God to, to me, help you measure accurately in your life. Amen? Amen? So the Spirit of the Lord said these words. Now is the time to hear and do, to rise to your position in Christ, to take your place in building the kingdom. Now is the time. So if you thought that time was reserved for the future you can now adjust yourself. Um, Tomorrow is not it. Tomorrow is not when we're gonna fulfill the plan of God. Tomorrow is not when we're gonna get around to it. The Holy Spirit said now. In other words, you've come into the kingdom now for such a time as this, okay? So the word attention, as you know, is not actually found in the King James Bible. Uh, The King James Bible or the Bible itself uses the word attend, The English version is attention. So if you look at Proverbs 4, remember one way that we uh, study the Bible is we don't take scripture out of context. The same way you're not going to take what a human says out of context and twist it. Hopefully you won't. That won't help you. Um, You don't want to uh, make scriptures fit your situation. The best thing for you to do is make your situation fit the scripture. Okay, and so we're going to always follow Bible doctrine. So the entire chapter of Proverbs 4 is about a father's wise instruction. This being your father, your heavenly father. Amen. The instruction you follow, not just the one you hear, determines the outcome of your life. But I would add this, and that's a saying that I sort of made up, so that's not doctrine. Um, the instruction you don't follow will also determine the outcome of your life. So it's one thing for us to hear, it's another to do. So what we want to do is if we find ourselves saying these words, well, I know in response to what God said, a pastor said, or anybody in authority said, don't say it. Proverbs says, if you're silent, a fool is considered wise. To use the rebuttal, I know, when someone has said something to you, is to indicate I am a knower and not a doer. And therefore, James calls me self-deceived. Just don't admit it and you'll be better off, okay? (laughs) So the phrase, I know, is out of your vocabulary as of tonight. Aren't you free? You're like, yes, Pastor Marie is always freeing me. <laughs> so Proverbs 4 1 says this, and there's three instructions in this verse. And remember, your goal is to read the Bible looking for instructions, not trying to avoid them. What we often read the Bible for is affirmation. If you read it for instruction and do the instruction, the results will affirm you. You won't have to seek affirmation. Affirmation is based on the fruit you produce and it's visible to you and everybody else and you won't have to seek it because you'll be stumbling over it. You can consider yourself affirmed, right? So it says, hear, and that's the first instruction, hear ye children. In other words, there would be some people that weren't gonna hear. The instruction of a father, which means not everybody is a father to instruct you. Not everybody has the position, the authority, the ability to instruct you. And, which means this is co-joined, you can't separate these, attend to no understanding. So people, if, you, if you're a person that finds yourself saying, well, I don't understand, I don't understand, there's a method for you not to have to say that anymore. You, Proverbs is full of it. This is the way you get understanding. It mainly says that understanding comes on the backside of submission. That means you don't understand something before you begin to do it. How many of you, your teacher forced you to memorize and repeat multiplication tables that you did not understand? When did you understand them? 
after you memorize them and begin to repeat them and exercise in them, right? You understand things by doing, and people call that kinetic learning. We're all kinetic learners. That may not be your leading dominant form of learning, but we all have all three, kinetic, auditory, and visual learning, right? Okay, so God is telling us three things in this verse, and they're very important. So the word here in the Bible means intelligently. So you don't have to listen to Satan tell you you have a low IQ, intelligent quotient, because God just told you that you have the ability to hear and do it intelligently. Let God define who you are. Don't let others define you, and some of you don't let yourself define you. Stop listening to yourself. You're not helping yourself. Until God's word is in your mouth, don't listen to yourself. If you put God's word in your mouth, listen to that, okay? So it says, hear intelligent, and to hear intelligently means this, to have good understanding, being quick to comprehend, and good judgment. So one of the reasons I let you ask questions on Wednesday night, and it's important that you train yourself to formulate a question because it's called comprehension. You're training your spirit, man, to allow the word I'm speaking to go in your spirit, man, and release understanding up to your mind so that you can articulate a how. I heard the what, now how. That means we are in the doing. We are putting it in our mouth immediately and we are saying, I moved into the how. I received, I heard it, I received it, now I wanna do it. So I have, I have a question on the how. I've already moved into the I'm a doer. So that's why it's important. And are those of you asking questions that, that you learn uh, from other people's questions and answer, Amen. And because you're getting the word in you because you're eating it immediately, amen? So Bible study is a little bit different than Sundays, okay? So w the word here intelligently means that, but the word here in the Bible means two additional things. Every time it's listed, Greek or Hebrew, declare and obey. Hearing is not American English vernacular. Don't look up Bible words in Webster's Dictionary and think you'll have an actual description. To hear in Webster's means you heard audibly, which didn't mean you understood it or did it. It just means you weren't hearing impaired. So in the Bible, God calls hearing that you heard what he said, you declared it with your mouth, and then you did it, and then he calls you a hearer. He calls a doer a hearer. In other words, God gets to define his own words. Do you like other people telling you what you meant by something? Of course not. God doesn't either. You like to define your own thoughts and your own feelings about things, right? You like to be asked on those things. Under, so he says, attend, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but he says to know understanding. Understanding means you know the meaning of it. It's one thing to hear it and go, I heard that, and another to understand the meaning of it. Perfectly wisdom to look well to, to think diligently, separate and distinguish mentally. Now, if God tells us to do this, would he be unjust if he didn't provide the ability? Right, but he's not unjust. So we don't have to read it and go, oh, I just can't. Can't or won't. Yeah, check yourself. Amen. I can do nothing. That's right, Lord. With you, I can do all things. Thank you that I am not alone. You provided the grace, which means the ability. All I had to do was to believe you. Amen. I don't have to see it. I don't have to feel it. I just believe you. You said I can do it. Let's commence to doing it, right? Partnership, not doing this alone. If you could do it alone, you didn't need a savior. Yeah. And since the people in hell, if they could come back, would tell you, you need a savior. Okay, and he's provided the grace, but your part is the faith. Okay, so if we're gonna look at the word attend, what does attend mean? In Hebrew and Greek, it means slightly different, but actually they're put together. So in the Hebrew, and we're in Proverbs, so this is Hebrew, it means to prick up the ears. So if God tells us to prick up the ears, that means in general, our ears are not pricked up because he doesn't instruct us to do what we're already doing. So we have to go, you know what? Can our ears be sort of floppy and dull like a dog's? Yeah, and you know how a dog would like, your dog, and you, you won't hear something, but you know something, something's being heard because the dog is moving its head. The dog is pricking up its ears. And what? And so that's what we're supposed to do every time we're reading the Bible or pastors talking. Not checking our text messages, not responding to the Facebook post in the middle of church. Prick up your ears, and it says, stretch yourself forward. Anybody ever felt like they were like, shh, shh, hear that? 
Yeah, what are, what are they doing? Pricking up their ears, and all of a sudden now, what you were watching on Netflix, you're like, shh, what was that? Did you hear that? Yeah. But this is how we're supposed to sit in church, not when you think somebody's breaking in to steal your pizza. Stretch yourself forward. Sit near. Why does pastor ask you to sit in the front? Are you a front row Joe? Are you on the front row? You should be up front because someone who's pricked up their ears and giving attention is sitting close to the front. Sitting close to the front of what? Instruction, right? And it says to accompany as a servant, to stand, to meet with favor, take notice of, incline, lean in, look towards face to face. That means when pastor looks up, he can look into your eyes and go, he made a point and looked at me. He was talking to me. You better hope so. (laughs) If the shoe fits, I hope you got both of them. Anybody tried to walk around without a shoe? One shoe? What happened? I was riding the All-American Scream Machine when I was younger, and um, it's a 92-foot uh, dropper, like, I think it's 90 degrees, too, and my shoe flew off. Ooh. Came right off my foot. It wasn't loose. It was a sneaker. I guess the, what do you call it? The, uh, thank you, that. <laughs> yeah, and I was screaming all the way down. It was fun. Uh, and so my shoe flew out, and I went to look for my shoe. I think it ended up in the little water pond, but I had to go buy a pair of flip-flops. Why? I couldn't walk around with one shoe. If the shoe fits, look for the other one. These shoes are made for walking, right? So aren't we glad if you're like, oh, was that for me? I hope so. Hit me with your best shot. No problem. Yeah, that's what I comb my hair for. We came in here for nothing to apply to us? Weird. People say weird stuff to me all the time. (laughs) Okay. So we're hoping it was for me. Yeah, I got something. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So um, attend means to take notice of Klein. Look, face to the front. Be directed. What? With respect and value. Hands, feet, and mouth. So there are five things, write this down, that you should show up to every church service with. Your Bible, a notebook, a pen, an offering, and your faith. Because what you brought, you'll receive. You brought nothing, you receive nothing. The more you bring, the more you receive. And if you were showing up and you didn't bring those items, then you were expecting nothing. Because when, when I ex- ask God to talk to me, how many of you go before the Father in prayer time with pen and paper? If you do, he'll talk to you more. Stop being a legend in your own mind and go, I'll remember everything God says to me. You don't remember what you said to yourself five minutes ago. Yeah. How many of you make lists to go to the store, then spend your entire time in the store trying to remember, guess what you put on the list that you left home on the counter? And the coupon too. Coupons are useless because they don't ever make it into the store. (laughs) You're like, oh, I cut that out. My my little stack and yeah, where is that? Not with me. Okay, so um, we're gonna uh, show up with these items. What does that mean? We are sitting up front. We are giving respect and value. I have come here to receive all that the Father has for me. And I don't care what package it's being delivered in. I don't care what gender, what personality, what they look like. If it's, if it's free from the word, it's for me and I'm taking all of it. And I hope all the shoes fit and I hope I go with three pairs. Amen. Yeah. Because these shoes are made for my walk, they're made for my run, and they're made for tromping on the devil. So I'll take three pairs every time I show up. What you place a demand on, you get. What you don't, don't value, don't respect, you don't get anything out of. Amen? Okay, so what is God saying to us? This is a very short verse, but heavy, chunky, serious, right? I could preach the whole time on that, but I'm going to give you a few more. Okay, so we understand. So go to verse 20. My son, attend to my words. So God is really describing in what manner he wants you to treat his word. So not just in a service, but how you treat the word in a service already tells the person ministering, the pastor, exactly how you treat it at home. So if you don't bring your Bible, you probably don't crack it at home. Yeah, and if you're not taking notes, you probably don't review them because the, the meal that the Lord prepared for me, I put in the refrigerator carefully wrapped and I get it out Monday and eat a little and Tuesday because I don't like to prepare my own food. 
And what do I need to cook when somebody else did it for? What a ridiculous waste of time that is. And so I'm going to get, it's not, not rocket science to figure that out. Well, there's really good food in here, but we'll just let it, let it rot and order a pizza. Yeah, no, we're going to get those notes out Monday. Why? Because our main diet is what our pastor is feeding, sheep food, which is what we are on a Sunday, not the internet. That's why we put it on podcasts. So we'd be driving down the road and going, was I even in service? I didn't hear that. Right, because you retain 7% out of 100. And you think you can live off 7%? You barely live off 100 if you got it. But you need to listen to it 14 times to even bother to retain 100. And that has nothing with, to do with doing. Anybody listen to the podcast 14 times? Not yet. Not yet. Don't have, a, don't have 100% then. So we're like, you're going to talk about the anointing again? Well, I'll quit talking about it when you start doing it. <laughs> yeah. When you get it, <laughs> I see you flowing in it. We can move on to the next subject. Happy to do it. But since, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Or, or, or what? We have, we're walking in the fullness of it. Well, where's the fruit? Yeah, so we'll go back over. Aren't you glad that God is willing to be repetitious? Paul said, it's not a bother for me to repeat myself. Right. Yeah, aren't we glad? Yes. Okay, so 420, my son, attend to my words. So it tell, we already know what the word attend means every time we put our eyes on it. In other words, do you spend more hours in a day attending to social media than you do the word? You incline your ear. You take your, never take your face out of it. You'll, you'll lean in. You'll laugh. You'll share it. Is that how you respond to the word? No, I don't have time today. I'm too busy. Or I don't get anything out of that. I don't understand that and put it away. Or you speed read through your one-year Bible and go, okay, thank God I'm done with that. Back to Netflix for three hours. Yeah. You can have what you want, but you'll forfeit what you desire. Okay, so move over to chapter five. I told you it was steak, Chateaubriand, steak for two, some for you, some to share. Okay, Proverbs 5.1 says, my son, attend to my wisdom. So James says, you can ask for wisdom if you lack it and God will give it to you. But what we thought is that wisdom would rain out of, out of heaven and fall on our heads and make us wise. He said he'd give it to you, but you didn't look at the manner with which it would come to you. He will give it to you, but you have to know how to receive it. By what? You're inclining, you're attending, you're leaning in. You've got my, your notebook. When you're called into your boss's office, you bring a pen and paper and you write down everything he says, right? Well, if you do, if you want to keep your job or get promoted, why? Because you're not going to remember everything. And then you ask like a good employee, and what else can I do? And what else can I do? And what else can I do? Until there is no further answer. And then your last thing is, if you think of something, sir, just let me know, ma'am, right? Okay, but is this how we do to God? Or do we take his words and go, you know what? I'm still praying about that. I'm processing that. I'm getting to that. And we're wondering why we're not, we're not attending. We're not evaluating. We're not giving it our whole attention. But we know we know how to do that because we do that for anything we desire and we enjoy. So we can't say to God, well, I don't really know how to study. I don't really know how to pay attention because your social media, for those of you that don't know, has a little green light on it like a switchboard and it clocks your hours and we can all see it. So it doesn't do any good to go, I'm never on social media. Oh, I just 10 minutes a day. No, you three hours and 40 minutes. <laughs> and that's on a short day. You must have been busy because some of you are 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, hearken unto me. Let's go to chapter seven. Just, just saying, little secrets, right? You're lit up like a switchboard. <laughs> and if you pay attention to your email, some people don't ever check them. They send you in an email and a text message on your iPad, iPhone usage hours. So they're tracking you too. So nobody's lying to them, them except to themselves, right? <laughs> Proverbs 7.24 says this, Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. So what are the words of God's mouth? The entire Bible. That's a lot of words to attend to. Anybody run out of words to attend to? <laughs> Subjects to attend to? I still read things. I have to go, 
I don't think I have, I have the understanding of that. Anybody ha- happen to, Lord, I'm not, I'm not really clear on that. And I know some of it might be King James, but I really don't stop there because you can then get your Amplified, your Passion Translation. So we can't just go, oh, that's King James. I don't understand that. We can still look at something and go, Lord, I don't think I have the fullness of the application of that understanding, much less walking in any of it. Yeah, we should be reading things each day that, that, that yes, uh, are in strengthening the belief we already have, but we should have things that begin to form new beliefs in us that we're like, mm, I'm not sure I get that, but if I get it, I can see that I've let that slip. Shouldn't that be the process of every day? Yeah. The more you read, the higher your comprehension gets. Everybody knows that, right, in school, because they tell you if you have a low comprehension score, and you can even Google this, the cure is to read more. So people, what they want to say is when they're adults and nobody's making you do it, well, I don't really comprehend, I struggle. So you read less and, and watch more social media, and that turns your brain to mush. The way you increase comprehension is to read more, and actually I Googled it today just to check what the specific methods were, and I've always said this, that you read in the morning for instruction and at night for pleasure, and that's basically what they said. So when I I need to be instructed, that's in the morning. I get up and I'm reading my, these are the things I need to study and learn, and at night I read for pleasure. That doesn't mean I read Harlequin romance novels. I'm not talking about that kind of pleasure. I'm talking about I get to pick a book I want to read. Not a have to. I have a stack of half tos of study, of class, of things like that. And then I'm like, this is what I'd like to read. And I have those things I'm highlighting, usually two or three of those. Because your brain uh, works different on its comprehension, on its in- intake of instruction and processing things. And the reason it does is because that's the way God made it that way, right? Okay. So uh, the more you read, uh, if you think, I don't have a good vocabulary or language skills, how do you increase your vocabulary reading? Because you, you get bigger words. And if you'll stop and do what the Lord said, meditate, hmm, what meaneth this word? <laughs> and sometimes it's okay to use your Bible dictionary or your English dictionary and uh, just get a general understanding of that word. Add words to your vocabulary, right? The way we do flashcards with kids, all that is is just a pause and a meditation, getting them to stop, look at, and think about. It's okay for you to pause, say la, calmly think about that. That's what Psalm says after these things, right? So we know it's not an educational issue. So remember, like Pastor said, the throne is a baloney free zone. So we don't need to go, I don't have the education, I don't have the IQ. You can't say that. You can't use those as excuses. These are not educational issue. Is it a diligence issue, which is character? Yeah. Is it a choice issue? Yeah. But can anyone do it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Because God, does, is he a respecter of persons? No. So he gives grace to anyone who brings faith. And, and how much grace? As much as you want. As much faith as you bring, as much grace as you get. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 7.35, whip over there with me, because we want to look at this word attend in the Greek, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 35, and Paul, this is Paul talking, he says, and this I speak for your profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely, that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. So Paul is saying, I'm telling you this correction, this guidance. So every time you hear a sermon that sounds like you're being corrected or you're being guided, jump up and shout and run around the room for a change. Because he just told you, profit is available to you. Anybody not like profit, raise your hand. Okay. I'll be looking this Sunday for running around the room when pastor's correcting (laughs) instead of when he's talking about the anointing. Okay, Uh, so in other words, attend without distraction. That means God already knew you would be given to distraction, but you didn't have to give yourself to distraction. It would be up to you. He would tell you how not to involve yourself in that and let you know that obviously it would be a common thing to your flesh, but that the provision was there for you not to succumb. So in the Greek, in this verse, it means to attend and wait upon as a servant, to abide, to dwell, to continue permanently. So in other words, if I'm going to take my Bible and I'm going to say, Lord, I'm going to attend to your words without distraction, then he says, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to dwell here and abide here permanently. That doesn't mean I can read two minutes. (gasps) Oh, got to get that show in. Let me hurry and finish this up. Squirrel. Yeah. 
that is not abiding, that is not dwelling, that is, that is not permanently, that is not I eat your words and live. The more you eat, the more you live, the more prosperous you are. So you can be distracted if you want, if you want to, but this is what you need to remember. Satan cannot schedule your destruction, but he can and will schedule your distraction, which becomes your destruction. Yeah. Cannot do it without your total permission in your life. So we need to stop treating distractions if they're, as if they're not destructive and deadly. Anybody ever been distracted when they were driving? looked down, looked away, changing the radio, whatever, and you crashed your car? How many of that's happened to? How, maybe you were just too tired, distracted, yeah. How many of you have had your car crashed into by somebody that was distracted? Yeah, putting on their mascara, checking their uh, voicemail, whatever, or uh, possibly uh, distracted even in the thoughts of their own mind. Uh, can you see where distraction can cost somebody their life? Yeah. So distraction will schedule your destruction. So in other words, we don't enjoy when other people are distracted in our direction, right? So we want to sow that. So we want to show, sow attention. Um, how many of you have ever come, in, uh, come into work at a staff meeting and uh, your boss was like, are you with us? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was preoccupied. The only thing you should be preoccupied with is the word, except when you're at work. So we don't go, yeah, I'm sorry, boss. I was just thinking about Psalms I read this morning. You're not paid to think about Psalms. Yeah. <laughs> so in other words, being preoccupied with something else when you were supposed to attend to your job, how about attending to your ministry of service position? Oh, I was distracted. I was talking. I was interested in this story. I overheard that. Or I was a legend in my own mind about my problems this week. Pre- Occupied, rather than occupied with my duty and responsibility. Is that going to cost somebody? And here's what we don't mind. We think, well, I can do what I want. Won't hurt anybody. Until we put the shoe on the other foot and go, how do you enjoy people when they're... Anybody uh, ever been waiting in line and somebody appeared in front of them to be distracted? And you're like, uh, we got places to go, things to do, you know, personal universe up there. Anybody ever been on an airplane where someone's in the aisle and you're like, take your time, don't worry, we all didn't have somewhere to go. <laughs> Just, you know, get that dead yak shoved up in the overhead bin kind of depth perception issues, personal universe, but are people living in that more and more, this personal universe that I can be preoccupied with myself and I don't care what it cost other people that I was supposed to be attending to the word, attending to their needs. It says like a servant. We're not even present in the moment. Every time I travel and I'm in a restaurant, I look and I look around. I love, I'm a people watcher. And the only thing I see now is people's faces in their phones. Literally 100% of them. I used to be able to go to the mall when I was younger and really learn some cool stuff, body language, facial expressions, lots of awesome information that I would intake. Really cool. Now nothing. Lifeless, deadpan, this. At dinner tables in every restaurant, every single person is like this. Even in the airline lounge. No talking, no conversation. You have to on purpose begin to attend. That will not work for us to become part of the culture. If a soldier is distracted, can they get themselves and other people killed? Are we soldiers? Yeah, people's lives around us matter. Maybe that moment you were distracted scrolling through your phone in the grocery line is the moment you didn't notice the person in the wheelchair or the mother that God was trying to say, she's using her last 20 bucks for these four kids hanging off of her. Would you help her out with her groceries? See, we're being self-absorbed and we're not attending to his words and we wonder why our lives are not going in the right direction. And these are not, um, these are not big things. Remember, Jesus said the little foxes would spoil the vine. So we're talking about a lot of the little foxes, right? So it says to wait upon as a servant, to continue permanently, to be firm and unmovable. You cannot be unstable. In the world of instability, you must be stable, immovable, endure patiently and sustain. So just the word distraction means care. 
what? We're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about our bodies, our bank accounts, what we want to do, what we want to eat. Uh, we've taken care, but almost we've taken uh, the care of our own selves and our own pleasures and comfort. This morning as I was meditating on this message, because I usually on my last day that I've prepared it, just get quiet and meditate on it. And I, I was just uh, waking up. And I was like, Lord, we are literally immersed almost to the point of drowning. I mean, I go in comfort. Here I lie in, in a comfortable bed comfortable sheets, comfortable night clothes. We get up in America, we put on our, our comfy lounge clothes, our sweatpants, and we go get a hot cup of coffee. We, shower. we are immersed in comfort, self-comfort. We're not, though, immersed in the comforter's plans for the day. And that, and that requires not being uncomfortable in that sense where I need to get scratchy sheets and lay on a Fred Flintstones, you know, stone bed. And I'm not talking about that. But we can be, become so self-absorbed in comfort that that's all we think about. What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? Who's going to affirm me today? How are my needs going to get met? How am I going to meet my needs? How are others going to meet my needs? I, 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 I. You know, there's a small I in him, H-I-M, and that I belongs to him. And when you replace that with your big I, capital I, you remove him out of his spot. Keep your big I. Two things are in your way, your I and your butt. Spell, spell the second one any way you need to, because uh, it's going to be both of those. But, but Satan said, I will exalt myself. Keep your big I, capital I, the little I in him. And, and then we will, he wants to give us everything we need comfort. But those things cannot begin to usurp um, to the point that we are distracted and we're not attending to his words anymore, Right. Okay, they will deprive you of what you were supposed to be attending to. Uh, the way to pay attention is to focus and not allow distractions. You have to be aware of what actually distracts you. What distracts you may not distract another person. That's going to be more personality driven or what's going on around you, right? Uh, any of your parents were like training you something and, and they wouldn't mind repeating themselves if they were seeing, are you watching me do this? Okay, do it like that. If they knew you were paying attention. Why do we call it paying attention? Because it costs you something. So you have to pay attention, which means you have to put something in it. You got to put skin in the game. Now you got a paddling if you didn't do it right because you weren't paying attention, which was rightly so. But if you were paying attention and just were doing it wrong or understanding, would they patiently teach you again? Or if you didn't have a parent, then just accept my words as fact. This is the way it's supposed to work, right? This is God. He's a good father. He'll tell us again and again and again. But if we're not paying attention to what he's saying, he's not obligated to repeat himself because he's a perfect gentleman. He's not going to force you. Your natural parents will slap you upside your head because that's their job. But God's going to be like, uh, let me know when you're ready to listen, right? Do you enjoy talking to someone that's not listening? What do you do? Be quiet. Yeah, or just... I've been at a dinner table where someone thought that their, whatever was going on on their phone was more important than me. I, I paid the bill, got up and left. I paid their bill because I don't want to have an offense. Let me, pay, let me take care of the whole bill. I am irrelevant. Yeah, I'm not irrelevant. I'm just irrelevant to you. So I have to go and be where I'm relevant, right? Because time is short. Don't be preoccupied with anything, Lord. Also, when you're reading and listening to someone, a sermon podcast, don't put filters on. Open mind, open heart. Here, what are filters? That's right. The number one filter you're gonna have is your gender and your personality. So we're taught through all of society that you better say everything right to me or I'm gonna be offended with you. I'm watching you. But see, that's perspective, and your perspective is called narrow-minded. Some people are so narrow-minded, they can look through a keyhole with both eyes. Yeah, they got a mind like a steel trap, too. It's shut, and you can't pry it open with the crowbar. Uh, your personality. So if I, took, if I were to actually come over to your house tomorrow morning and offer to make you a pot of coffee with the amount of filters that you filter other people's speech to, how many of you would be like, love you, no thanks? Because you have gender. Do you have personality that you filter it through? Yeah, you're a little quadrant because, you know, your perspective is law. It's not. And then you have culture. Well, that's not the way I was brought up. That's not the way we did it in my house. That's not the way we do it in my country. How about um, education? Tomato, tomato. 
One, one person was educated with an MIT graduate education, the other person went to trade school, we, different levels of education, uh, equally valued, equally loved, but just different. How about emotion, hurt, anger, and offense? Those are really fun filters that people got to get through. What they said is not what you heard. So it goes through the air. I love the best example of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. If you never watched it, watch the one thing where the candy bar goes up in the air in its particles, and then it comes over as something else. This is what happens. You speak E, goes up in the air, particles that try to go through all these filters, hurt, anger, offense, uh, gender, culture, personality, education, and then they, you're expected to come out right. What you say is never what somebody heard. So we sit there before the pastor and go, better not say anything, pastor. Wow. Yeah, right, right? We're, we're filtering these things so what? Heart's not open, your mind's not open, and so why we don't get anything out of it. Because we go with go, what is a, what is a perception? Pers perspective is what I can see from my point of view, which is very small for what I'm looking at and then what you're looking at. Perspective is how I interpret that perception of what I saw. Neither one of those is fact, much less truth, but we say my perception and my perspective are truth, and you can't tell me different. And we wonder why we're alone, isolated, uneducated, and ignorant, and not victorious, because we have decided that we are humanist. We are our own gods, and even God's word itself can't convince us to give up our way of thinking we, and we have to what? What are we talking about? We're not going to take on this culture of the world because that's what they're doing, and they're going down the proverbial drain yeah. fast, okay? And they don't even have the ability to fight the current, okay? So your own viewpoint, your preconception. How about this, a presumption? We go from even worse to that. We go from perspective to presumption and assumption, and then we formulate opinion on what we think we know that we don't actually even know. Anybody realize that most of what's out there, even on Google now, is not truth or fact? You can't even Google Wikipedia and get facts or truth. You have to know how to do research and analysis now to even get information that's correct. Anybody figure that out? So what you think you know, you probably don't know. So one, one sure thing you can know, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and so help you, God. This is a sure foundation to build your life on. But you will need help with some of it. So you can't just go, well, I hear God and I read it for myself, and therefore I'm fine. Then you don't need a pastor. You might as well not waste your time coming to church, right? Don't tell pastor I said that, but it's true anyhow. Okay. Uh, the very, one thing we could do, the Bible talks in Corinthians about being a mirror. The first thing you want to do with a human, if you even care about clarity and communication, is use what everyone knows, psych 101 is a mirroring technique. So say a sentence to me. I like your blouse today. I heard you say that you like my blouse today. Am I correct? What did I do? Just reflect. Identical. A mirror does not distort the reflection. So I can quote verbatim. So why? If I say, are you sure you like my blouse? <laughs> She's going to go, now maybe I didn't say that. What did I say? Then I, what did you hear me say? Because what she said is not what I heard. See right there, we're going to figure out the fault right there. So the first thing you want to do is mirror. Then we both said, now that doesn't mean that I got the same meaning. Because if I took one of those th things and was a foolish person who put eight filters in my coffee pot this morning to expect to get a decent cup of coffee, I'd be like, I wonder what she means by that. I think I'll decide because I'm God. I think she meant maybe she didn't like my boss any other time. Are you judging me the way I dress? I don't think you're about. Our minds are just going off on something, and we laugh about that, but you're doing it every day, all day long, to everybody on social media, your boss, yourself, and the Word of God, and the pastor mostly. What, what, what do they mean by that? What I say is what I mean, and what I mean is what I say, but if you're unclear on the interpretation, please allow me to define it for you. I'd be happy to. If there's one thing I am, it's clear. Okay, so uh, what we want to do is we're not given distractions, but you know what we've done? We can't even accuse other people of distracting us. We have now distracted ourselves. Why are we give, being given distraction? We don't want to think, and we don't want to feel, and we don't want to obey. I am guilty. 
There are times in my life where I'm like, I'd like a distraction. And we think, you know, no, we, I want to go, whatever, the antique store, get a soda, walk around, just eye candy, just because I don't want to think and feel about what I'm going through. And I don't mean that some of that is not healthy. I call it soul food. I also have to be led by the Spirit when God says, that's enough. Now you're not, you're not having a healthy distraction to feed your soul. You are being given to distraction and not dealing with the reality of this. Okay, that means the Holy Ghost is leading us and the Word is leading us. But see, the, that's why people drink and they do drugs and they have to play every waking moment. And parents think it's their job to entertain their children, not on a weekend, but every night. It's got to be about what is my entertainment? Six to 11 is all about entertainment. Every single night. When I grew up, it's like, if you got your chores done on Saturday and you had time to play and you weren't too tired and it wasn't raining, you could. <laughs> and then only if your dad didn't say, we got a family project today. You're part of this family. This Saturday isn't just your day to play. If I say we're washing the car, we're washing the car. Yeah. And you thought better of saying anything about it, Right. Okay, so we want to use the mirror to go farther to get the understanding of the meaning. This is called comprehension. In school, it's called text and subtext. So if we read something in the word that's textual, we can't say it means that. We have to go, what's the subtext? Anybody ever read something that was kind of a tongue-in-cheek or a prose or an oxymoron? All those things, yeah. In other words, how it was being stated was not the meaning. There's the literal and the figurative, this is why we don't want to have filters when we're attending to the word. We just want to go, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's me, me, I'll eat that or whatever, and not filter everything in a negative manner to where we don't get anything out of it. Amen. And we're, we're actually think we're, we're has any, you ever seen anybody that uh, is eating a lot of food but is clearly malnourished? Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can consume calories and be malnourished. Anybody figure that out? I think you spell it T-W-I-N-K-I-E. <laughs> Consume a case of Twinkies and not be full, and be full. I'm so full, I ate so much today. Yeah, but you're malnourished. Yeah. Right, okay, so there's a, a what we eat and how we eat it matters, right? right? Okay, we're also giving ourselves to distraction because we don't actually wanna be responsible. Do you know what the word responsible means? Because our whole society, even our government says, nothing is your fault, it's all somebody else's which doesn't make it true, just because they say it. Responsible means that you're three things. You're answerable, you're accountable, and chargeable. See, it's what everybody wants. I want you to give me a promotion. I want you to make me a leader. I want you to make me manageable, but I will not be accountable. I will not be chargeable, and I will not be responsible. It doesn't work that way, because if you want any leadership, the buck stops with you. That means you, the boss gets to bust your chops for that next five cents an hour. Our response to his ability is what he requires of us. He gives the ability, and all he asks us to was what? Respond with our faith to receive the ability. But we're like, I don't want responsibility. I don't want any accountability. I don't want to be chargeable for what? The neglect of my duties or the neglect of other duties. We have a whole society that thinks they should be paid to be the next social media star which is a do less than nothing job. But don't get upset with them. It was people older than them that gave them that ability and taught them that that was good and right. They don't have any of their own abilities or money. Okay. So you respond. Uh, there's a... <laughs> um, so what are we talking about? Being ADD, don't yield to your flesh. So are you going to be attention deficit to the word? Or are you going to be attention deficit to the world? You're going to have to deprive something of your attention every day. There's not enough hours in the day for, I don't know about you, but I don't have enough hours in the day to be all caught up on what the sports teams are doing, the weather's doing, the government's doing, the social media's doing. People always ask, did you see that on social media? Thank God I didn't. The less I see, the better. Yeah, because that's why a lot of Christians are on antidepressants. So we want to yield to his words and wisdom and we'll, and we'll prosper, amen? amen? So do you know what the definition of sin is? Because pastor talked about repentance Sunday. Do you know what the definition of sin is just to miss the mark? Just miss the mark. In other words, some people are sinning by omission because they're not aiming for the mark. 
Well, I wasn't aiming for the mark. Right, that was your first problem. Anybody gone to the shooting range? And so I've been to the shooting range. It's kind of like bowling. You're just kind of going to be casual and warm up your first go round. So you're at the shooting range and you just got your weapon and you're just firing and going, let's just see how I do and how, how, how well this goes. And you're not really bad, but you're not really attending and very serious. And then you're like, okay, it wasn't so good. Okay, now I'm going to get serious. Anybody say that? Second game, I'm going to get serious. Okay, second paper, put it up there. I'm going to get serious. Yeah, how about we just get serious when we get out, get out of bed? And you get serious, and we got four inches, and we're going to unload the whole clip in it. When you get serious, you hit center mass. But do you have that ability to be serious from the get-go and not be casual and flippant and playing around and be distracted and not being serious? If we're not being serious, why are we doing it? My daddy taught me if you're going to do anything, do it, do it 100%. So not how you missed the mark was not paying attention or attending properly to it. We were being casual, we were being flippant, we're socializing at the bowling alley, or we're just going, eh, just going to waste that clip and just, you know, what, see what happens, be casual. That's how we miss the mark. But see, in God's eyes, that's sin, because he said there's a mark for the prize of your high calling. Why is it a high calling? Because his calling is high. And that we had the ability to hit that if we were aiming at it 100% of the time. We had the ability to hit center mass. Why? Because it was his and not yours. And he said, if you'll just bring faith, you'll hit center mass. So you pull that paper forward and every single one of those shots is in a four inch square because that's the size of your heart. You're, you, you can be accurate. Accuracy is just someone who says, I'm going to pay attention and I'm going to practice it and be skillful every day. I don't care what I feel. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I hear. Or it's going to get up tomorrow and do it, Right? Okay, so God said there were three things in these verses. He put your, he included your mind, understanding, your mouth with words, and your spirit or wisdom is manufactured. In one verse, he wanted you to include spirit, soul, and body. Why? He wanted you to be fully engaged. If you include your spirit, your soul, and your body, you will not be distracted. So distraction comes when people, anybody ever said that they were present in body but absent in mind? Yeah, not so much fun, was it? If, when it was directed towards us. And so, or they were inebriated with some sort of substance, again, present in body and, and absent in mind. Okay, so uh, the voluntary action of violation of God's laws or the neglect to obey the command is sin. So we can have wrong actions that we do on purpose, we know better, but we can also say, I'm just gonna neglect my duties and responsibility, and God calls that sin because James says, he who is, knows what is right to do and doesn't do it, it is sin. That is not the big 10, that is in your life. The Holy Spirit told you to not eat that or do eat that or not drink that. How many of you, like me, the Holy Ghost has told you to drink the green smoothie, but you pick the piece of pizza in the fridge? <laughs> Going, I'm gonna have that later. Later doesn't ever come in my house because I go home and I go, it's late, I don't wanna make that green smoothie, I'm gonna have a piece of pizza. And I'm joking about that because we're all there. But do you know that God defines that in my life when he's told me to do something as sin? That is neglect of what he's asked me to do. He's not trying to be mean to me. He's trying to keep me in my body to run, to run my race. Why? So that others might be benefit. Because if I check out of here I'm early, I'm selfish. Because to, for, for me to, to go home is gain. But not for everybody else. For me to live is Christ. And what we have to do is go, we're not living for ourselves. We're living for him, right? Because we're bought with a price. So, God, so when I say hashtag all in, God said, I want you to be all in. I want you to be present spirit, soul, and body. I want you to give your full attention to my words. You doing them, and then you obviously sharing them. We can't say it's hard or complicated anymore, can we? We can't use these excuses because they don't apply. No one on the path of destiny is in possession of an excuse. An excuse will cost you destiny. Amen. You got to decide. You can have what you want or you'll forfeit what you desire. Okay? And we say, well, I don't know if I can do it. You can go right now and go, I want to build a doghouse. I don't know how to build a And I can Google how to build a doghouse and YouTube it. So what do I do? I go down to Lowe's and I get my supplies. I got knowledge and information. I came home with my supplies and I got understanding of the directions and I began to build and produce a doghouse. Therefore, is wisdom. And we say we can't do that with the word of God. But you can do something you've never done with a YouTube video, but we act like we can't understand the word of God and do it. Well, if you need to Google it, maybe get on Google it. 
right? So that's just the application of the information. And can we become skillful? If we look to his word and we lean in face to face, uh, it, it's going to have a greater measure in our lives. But if we're doing it, if you're always doing the prayer, always doing the Bible reading, you're just multitasking. Well, I only do that when I'm doing other things. How well will your relationship go with the person that every time your, your person that you're doing life with wants to talk to you, you're like, yeah, talk to me while I'm doing this. And you never sit down with them and you never have face-to-face -face connection. Or you go before God and you're like, I want to talk to you. And you list off your pros. Okay, bye-bye, see ya. I did my confessions. But you don't, you don't let him talk back. Yeah, we do a drive-by fruiting to God. And he's like, come by later if you want to. We are to give the proper attention to his words the way he asked us to by being fully present in mind, heart, and body, all in, all the time, with unbroken focus, undistracted, bringing our full attention, leaning in, serving, sitting near, standing near, face and eyes forward, our A-game. This is what we want God and others to do for us. We cannot ask or expect this if we do not sow it. This is not an occasional posture or a casual afterthought, a possible fit into our schedule if we feel like it or we need or want something. This is a daily, hourly focus and adjustment for the price of total victory as a son, servant, and soldier who is running for the prize and knows the price is not greater than the prize. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. To learn more about our international ministry and how to become a partner, visit jackmyersministries.com or lifefamilychurch.net.